Okay, so hey guys, um, thanks for having me to the hub tonight. So I'll just let you know again, I'm Jenny Lee here tonight as a co-chair of the Oxford County Suicide Prevention Team. And I also work as a social work therapist at the Oxford County Community Health Center. And today uh, is International Suicide Prevention Day. So I'm super excited that I was invited to the hub tonight to um, talk about suicide prevention and intervention. And so, um, I'm going to try and share my screen a couple of times, and although I practice this with Jenna, I can't promise it's going to go off uh, without a hitch, um, but that's kind of the joy of this new Zoom thing, and so let's see here. Do you see my screen? Can someone let me know in the chat? Oh, let me see here. Uh, okay, I'm going to assume I can see, that you can see it. I'm sorry that I'm sorry. I'm looking around my screen because I've all, all of a sudden lost access to chat. Yeah, you're and, good, Jenny Lee. I, um, yeah. You can see it. I can also help um, let you know when something comes in in the chat if that helps. Okay, that's great, because I think when I'm not sharing my screen, it'll be okay, but when I'm sharing my screen, I can't quite find the chat here anywhere, and so you can see my screen, and so I'd like to just start us off with um, this video. The most dangerous idea we have about suicide is we shouldn't talk about it, that if we ask someone if they're suicidal, it might make the problem worse, but that's just not true. Talking about suicide doesn't make someone suicidal. There's decades of research on it. People become suicidal because they experience intense stress, suffering, and agitation. Thinking about suicide creates a sense of control in a situation that otherwise feels uncontrollable, intolerable, and everlasting. When you ask someone if they're suicidal, it lets them know that you see they're in pain, that you care, and you want to help. This alone might help save their life. If you're concerned about someone, if they're acting differently or something doesn't feel right, ask them if they're thinking about suicide. If they are, here's what you should do next. If they have access to something they can use to end their life, ask them if they can temporarily get it out of their home. Being suicidal makes you more likely to act on emotions and increasing the safety of someone's home can help them get through this dangerous time. Help them avoid drugs and alcohol. Both can make it easy to act on the thought of killing yourself. Encourage them to talk to someone that's in a position to help. Call a suicide hotline together or an emergency telephone number. Go with them to the nearest emergency room. For more information about the warning signs for suicide, resources for people who are suicidal, and research on suicide prevention, check out the links in the description below. All right, so I just wanted to start us with that, that little bit of an intro there. And um, to uh, let you know, those are the things that we're gonna be delving into together today. And so... Most of us know oh, about... Oh, first sorry, first Jenny first Lee. Stop any major type of bleeding and get that... Whoa, what is he talking so about, about now? Stop. Nothing that... <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> See, I told you, not necessarily off without a hitch. Um, so I wanted to start us out there uh, to see, um, just let you know the stuff that we're going to be delving into today. And so I wonder if we could use the chat to explore um, what are some things that you know to be signs of suicide, that someone might be thinking about suicide? What do you know might be some signs of that? Does anyone have any ideas? I'll start maybe, um, I'm gonna open up the chat and see if anyone has anything to contribute. Um, but to start us off, I'll think about some of the things that people most know about, that uh, someone might be thinking or talking about death. They might, um, they might sound like they're feeling hopeless or something that has happened in their life that they're just not able to deal with and they feel like the only way to deal with it is to maybe not be here anymore. Sometimes people will very openly talk about that. You might find that people are giving away um, things that are important or special to them. Maybe they're doing things that are more risky. 
um, they're engaging in risky behaviors or doing things that they wouldn't typically do. You know, that could be anything from when they're angry, maybe they're punching walls or hurting themselves. Um, or maybe that means that uh, they're doing more things like experimenting with drugs and alcohol when so that's not something they would typically do. Or um, maybe they're just losing interest in activities that they've usually been a part of. And I know that might be hard to gauge now in the time of the world that we're living in, but um, uh, maybe you just notice people aren't responding to your text messages or your direct messages like they used to, or when they do, they're not quite, uh, they don't seem to be themselves. They seem a little down. Does anyone else um, in the chat have any other ideas of what might be some signs that someone is thinking about suicide? I'll give you a few. Oh, there we go. Thanks. So not planning for the future. Yeah. And so we might find that people aren't talking about the future or what's going to happen next week or next month. Um, not making plans for the future. That's a great one. What else might be a sign that someone's thinking about suicide? What are some signs maybe that um, you might think that someone is feeling depressed? And you know, and we can think about that. Great idea here, saying goodbye to friends and family. So yeah, there might be some obvious saying goodbye, giving away of things, talking about death. What are some other ideas that might be signs that someone's thinking about suicide? I did give lots of examples there. I wonder if anyone has anything else. Well, there's lots of signs, and although we can talk about the different signs that you might see in a person, so we might see that they're not taking care of themselves as much, we might see um, that they just don't look um, like their typical selves, I mean, in terms of their mood or how they're presenting, we can talk about what we might see, what we hear, or, or what we sense. What does our gut tell us that, oh, maybe something's just not going right, and we wonder if maybe it's about suicide? As much as the examples that we just gave, and I'm going to show another short video, as much as these examples can all be signs of suicide, you might be thinking, well, I've experienced some of these things and I haven't thought about suicide. And you'd be exactly right. Um, not necessarily are these some um, signs that everyone is thinking about suicide, but they're definitely signs that we want to start thinking about, ooh, am I worried? And is this a time that I might want to ask someone? if they're thinking about suicide. And we're gonna talk about that ask right after we look at this one more short video about uh, signs of um, suicide. Go first, Kate. How do you help? Do you know how to spot the signs of suicide? Learning this could save someone's life. A person thinking about suicide may tell jokes about taking their life, obsess over death, or not care what happens to them. If you're worried, talk to them about it. Tell the person you care and are there to listen and help. And it's okay to ask the person if they're thinking about suicide. Asking does not make it more likely they'll consider suicide or give them the idea. If the person is thinking about suicide and gives you information on how or when they'll act, Get help immediately. Let them know you'd like to involve a safe adult, like a parent or teacher. If you think they're in immediate danger, call 911 or the emergency services in your area. Remember, you can always reach out to Kids Help Phone for support. For safety tools and resources, visit kidshelpphone.ca forward slash suicide. All right, and so there were some pretty, um, there, to me, there's some pretty important messages in there that it's okay to ask about suicide. Before coming on here tonight, did anyone worry that if they asked about suicide, um, they might plant the idea in someone's brain? Again, we'll use the chat. Has anyone ever worried about that? 
oftentimes I teach, um, I teach different suicide intervention trainings and oftentimes um, uh, some people worry about that. I'm really glad to read in the chat that some people say, no, I don't actually feel worried that talking about it will make somebody think more about it because that is a myth. Talking about it doesn't make someone think about suicide. It actually creates a space for us to talk about hard things. Um, and so when we think about those signs, so we notice the signs and we start to worry about uh, someone um, and uh, then what do we do? Oh, I see in the chat, I was nervous to start this group for the first time, to be honest. Yeah, I think so. And what, what made you nervous about starting this group the first time? I think trying new things and talking about new things definitely can create a bit of a nervous anxiety within us. And I really am, I'm excited to read that you were nervous and that you're still here because I like to say to people, um, feeling nervous and anxious doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's a bit of a warning sign for us about why, why do I feel nervous about this? What is it about? And oh, I love in the chat, you were able to identify, I was nervous because I wasn't sure about talking to new people that I don't know. And I'm so glad that you overcame your nerves and came here today um, to be in a space with people that, yeah, you don't really know, uh, to talk about some hard stuff in order to create a suicide safer uh, community. And so when we think about those signs that we might see or hear from a person and we wonder if they're uh, thinking about suicide, the next step is to ask about suicide. So there's some pretty important things that I want to share with you about, talk, um, about asking about suicide. And one of those things is about how we actually ask and the language that we use. So it's really important to use the words suicide or killing yourself. Does anybody feel like they might, they might um, want to say, are you thinking about hurting yourself? Because that feels a little more comfortable or safe to say it in that way. I think oftentimes I hear that from people and I think in my initial experience is talking to people about suicide and helping them with their suicide thoughts. Um, yeah, it feels a little easier to say, are you thinking about hurting yourself? But one of the important things is, is that we actually um, say to people, are you thinking about suicide? Or are you thinking about killing yourself? And can you think about why it's important to use those specific words when asking someone about suicide? What do we think, chat room? Why do you think it's important that we use the word suicide or, or um, killing yourself? Yeah, it's super important to be clear about what you're asking about. Yeah, and so if we say to someone, are you thinking about hurting yourself? Hurting yourself has a very different meaning than are you thinking about suicide or are you thinking about killing yourself? And so it's important that we use those words so that people know what we're talking about. And so let's say that I've been missing school um, uh, I've been, I've been, um, maybe you see me crying at lunch and not really answering my text messages. So a thing that you might say to me is, Hey, Jenny Lee, I noticed that, um, you know, at school, it looks like you're spending some lunch hours by yourself and you're pretty tearful and, and, um, it doesn't seem like you're feeling like yourself lately. And I feel worried about you. And I wonder, are you thinking about suicide, Jenny Lee? And so one way to ask people about suicide is to let them know, I see that something's up and let them know what that is. You know, do I notice, hey, Jenny Lee, you haven't been getting back to me in my messages. And when I see you at school, it doesn't seem like you're doing so well. You know, I notice these things and I'm worried. Are you thinking about suicide? And are, or are you thinking about killing yourself? And so those are really important ways. Um, those, that's a really important way, uh, way to ask um, uh, about suicide is to use the language and a way that can some people find it easier to ask that question and I think it's really lovely is to tell people what do you notice about them that has you thinking I really need to ask this question so it doesn't seem like it's a big bold question out of nowhere but instead you get to say to people I've noticed this about you and I'm worried that it might have something to do with suicide 
Are you thinking about suicide? Now, when I explain it like that, my chat room people, for those who are watching the video later, you'll, you might want to think about this yourself, but when I describe it that way, noticing, naming what you notice about someone and then saying, are you thinking about suicide? Does that feel uncomfortable? Do you think, oh, that seems a bit easier when I can say to people, this is what I notice and I feel worried. Are you thinking about suicide? Yeah, I imagine that maybe, maybe I could ask it in that way and it doesn't feel so scary. What do we think, chat room? Is it helpful to hear to, that we can use those signs that we notice about someone and use those to start our conversation? And to be able to ask, are you thinking about suicide? And then the next important piece after that is to listen. But what you need to know is you don't, um, you don't need to listen to solve any problems or fix things. You're just there to listen as a support person because for someone to tell us that they're thinking about suicide, that can be really hard sometimes. And maybe you might be the first person that's ever asked them that question straight out because we still live in a world where talking about suicide is a bit taboo. And so we learn that talking about it is maybe the best Thing that we can do but what we're learning now and what we're teaching is like that's not it's actually talking that saves lives and so we don't want to stay in silence and so we want to listen to the person and hear what's going on for them just long enough for us to say i think it's really important um, that we call in some extra help and in that video we watched actually i think both of them mentioned um Telling, talking to a trusted adult. And so I think it's really important that we know that, that um, whenever someone lets us know that we're thinking about suicide, that they're thinking about suicide, one of the number one rules we need to remember is that we can't keep it a secret. And so it's really important that we tell them the signs we see, ask them about suicide, and then listen, but also know that it's important I'm listening to you. We can't keep this a secret. It's important that a trusted adult is aware so that we can get you the help that's needed. And so none of this can be done in secrecy. Now, why do you think sometimes, uh, my chat room folks, why do you think sometimes people um, don't want us to tell anybody else and they want us to keep it a secret? Why might, when we ask someone, are you thinking about suicide, why might they want us to keep it a secret from other people? I can tell you some of the things I've heard from people, and I'll keep an eye on the chat room as well. So sometimes people tell me, well, I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed, I don't want to be a burden on people, I don't want to worry people. And sometimes people say to me, well, I don't want to go to hospital. And so I like to say to people, oh, they might feel hopeless or shameful because it's not that bad. Oh, great contribution chat room. Yeah, we don't have to tell anybody. It's not that bad. Right. And I think one of the most important things we can do as listeners is to let people know there's no shame in this. You don't have anything to be embarrassed about. Suicide thoughts are scary and nothing to be ashamed about. And we got to talk about them in order to stay safe from them. And, um, and whenever somebody says to me, it's not that bad, I say to people, well, can we talk about it and get other people involved so that it doesn't get worse, right? Because that's the goal, is that we want to help people not get worse. Because when someone's talking to us about suicide, their thoughts, right? They're not acting on it yet. And so what we want to say to people is, it might not be that bad, but I'd like you to get the resources and the help you get so that it never gets that bad. And so it's really important that we give them that listening space so that we can help them understand. I don't feel embarrassed that you're my friend or that I know you or that you're talking to me about this. And I don't want you to feel embarrassed or ashamed either. I'm asking if you're thinking about suicide because I'm worried about you and you're worth it. You deserve to feel um, good 
and healthy and well, and you deserve to live a life where you're not dealing with suicide thoughts. Um, and so letting people know that that's really, uh, really letting people know that's really, really important. So then we listen. And then what's important after that is to keep a person safe. So we saw in the video that if someone has access to something that they're thinking about using to kill themselves, it's important to tell the trusted adult about that and also ask the person, can we get that out of your house? What can we do to make sure the spaces that you're living in and that you're doing your hobbies in and the places and spaces that you're in, how do we make sure those are safe for you against your thoughts of suicide? And so this is where it's important um, to figure out who that trusted adult will be, because um, if you're living at home, it'll be important to let a parent know that I'm worried about this and this is in the house and can we uh, lock it up or put it away somewhere? Parents, can you hide it and not tell me where it is? Because right now I'm worried that if my thoughts get worse, this is, this is what I've been thinking about. And so we want to help a person keep safe. Yeah, and another um, thank you for that contribution from the chat room. Or they might use or find something to harm themselves with too. Yeah, and that's great. And so, you know what? I often say to people, are, have you thought about how you're, you're, you're going to kill yourself? Have you thought about how you um, will suicide? And these are questions that when you get people to the resources and those trusted supports in our community, these are the questions they'll ask. And because just because I might be worried about A, B, and C in my house, that doesn't mean that the person with suicide thoughts is actually worried about those three things. So we need to ask them, what are you worried about? And what do we need to do to help you feel safe? And that's really important because what I need to feel safe is really different than from what you need to feel safe and you and you and each of us, um, either on the, uh, at the hub tonight or watching the video later, will each need something different. And so it's really important um, to ask people, what are you worried about and what do you need? in terms of keeping yourself safe for now from those suicide thoughts. Is there any other things that might be important for you to listen for when, when you're listening to a person after you've asked them if they're thinking about suicide and then they, they've said yes? Or are there things that you're worried about, they might say, and you're not sure what to do? Because sometimes that can be a hard conversation to have with someone. I think it's really important to remember that conversation and when you're listening isn't to fix things or make anything better. It's just to listen to someone and give them the space to let them know that you can trust me, I care about you, I'm not judging you. And then we're going to get them to someone that can help them stay safe for now. And what resources do they need? Now, I'm going to share one more screen with you, and um, this is something that I use as a social worker, um, but I want to share it with you because I wonder if it might be helpful for you, or maybe you might show um, a teacher that you really trust, or maybe you'll show your parents, or maybe you really like your best friend's parents, and you might want to share this tool with them. So I'm going to show you here. Uh, a template that I often use um, as a social worker and in creating a safety plan with people. And so you'll see here on the left hand side that um, I like to rank people from one to, you'll see all the way down, to 10. So one is I don't have any suicide thoughts and 10 is I can't keep myself safe. I have a suicide plan and I think that this is when I need to go to hospital because I can't keep myself safe and they can help me do that in the moment. And what I like to do with people is ask them, what do you notice? Uh, and you don't have to do all 10. I like to do, you know, one, three, five, and see where it goes from there. But I'll say to people, what might people notice um, how you're feeling? So what might people notice when you're not having any suicide thoughts? What might people notice? I'm smiling. I'm uh, uh, playing or uh, doing my hobbies. I'm social. So these are the things and that people might notice about me. Um, but then I say to people, well, what might people notice if you're at a three and you start to 
have passing suicide thoughts. Maybe you're walking to the store and you start thinking, maybe it's better off if I'm not here. And then you think, oh, no, that's not really how I think. But what might people notice? So some people might say they'll notice I'm distracted, maybe um, late to respond um, to texts. And so then I say to people, well, what are things that I can do to help myself? So what might be some things? Do you have any ideas when you're starting to feel distracted or you notice that your mood's a little down? What are some things that you do um, that help you lift up your mood? And is there anybody in our chat that has anything to share that they'd like to say? What do they, what do they, um, what do you do when you're starting to just not feel like yourself? So sometimes people here will say, I'll go for a walk. I'll call a friend. Maybe I'll journal or color. Maybe I'll play a video game. Something to distract myself that makes me feel good. And then I say to people, starting at number three, oh, let's see, I think, uh, journal, yeah. Hey, and I see here, cry for a long time, and I know that's unhealthy, but you know what? I don't think that's unhealthy at all. I think it's really important that we can embrace our emotions and let us feel them. Because if you don't cry here, what can happen is you end up holding in all of those emotions and they get shoved down and shoved down and shoved down. And then you know what happens is that we find that people start to move down and their ranking, actually their thoughts get worse because they haven't given them any space to just let it all go. And maybe you cry with a friend, maybe you cry by yourself. I'm not gonna lie, it would be more, there's been more than one time that I turned on the shower and sat on the shower floor and had a good cry and um, it feels really good to let it go and not hold it all inside. So what's really important though is I tell people, once you get to number three, it's people, who will I call? Who will I tell? I'm just not feeling like myself. And it's important that you tell somebody because you're never alone in this. It's important that someone close to you knows, I'm not doing so hot lately. I'm okay. I'm not thinking about suicide all the time, but I'm definitely not feeling the greatest. And, um, and so I say here, sometimes people will say, people I will call, people say, I'll call a friend. Maybe uh, they'll tell a sister or a brother that they're close friends with. Um, maybe you'll let um, a parent or a caregiver know, you know, I'm just not feeling like myself. Maybe you have a counselor, you could let them know. Or maybe you're somewhere like the hub that afterwards you connect with someone um, with the resources they show you. And you just say, you know what, I learned that when I'm not feeling well, I really just need to tell somebody because talking helps. And sometimes just getting it off our chest can help us interrupt it and help us stay here in number three. Now, if these things, walking, call a friend, journaling, coloring, playing a video game, um, isn't helpful, and I end up at a five, what might people notice at a five? Oh, they notice that I'm missing, whether it's school or practice, I'm missing. Um, I'm not returning calls. Uh, maybe I notice I'm crying more. Maybe I'm angry more. And then, so what might I do here? Okay, well, maybe a walk might still help or calling a friend might still help. What are some more intense self-care things that you've learned about yourself? Does anyone here in the chat have any ideas about what other um, self-care techniques you have when you're starting to feel pretty rotten? Is it, that, is it that you need a day on the couch with a funny movie? Maybe it's a couple hours getting lost in YouTube lost in YouTube land. You know, I just need a day to do nothing. I just need to recoup. I need to make sure I eat well, get some sleep. Maybe I nap. Oh, let's see here, somebody else is sharing. <laughs> YouTube land, yeah, get lost in YouTube land. And so who am I gonna call at five? And here, I think it's really important if you have a counselor, you wanna call that counselor and let them know, hey, I'm starting to really struggle. I either have an appointment coming up with you or um, I need to book one because I'm not really feeling well. And here's where I like to tell people that you wanna make sure that you start calling Reach Out, our 24 seven talk line or kids helpline. 
calling these folks here and letting them know what you're thinking about and how you're feeling is important to try and what I call interrupt your suicide thoughts. So can we interrupt them and get them to pause at a five so they don't actually get any worse? It's really important though that as you get to six, seven, eight, and I say to people by nine, it's time that by nine um, that we're really calling, um, we're calling in our mega supports. So we're calling the crisis line. We're calling the crisis line and we might even at nine and 10 because we know this is when my thoughts are so big um, that I can't control them. I'm starting to think about how I might suicide. I'm starting to think about when and where, and I'm starting to have some really scary thoughts. And I don't know if I can keep myself safe. I don't know if I can revisit my plan and go for a walk or call a friend because I just feel so distraught and distressed. And so at this point, it might be really important to call 911 or go um, to the emergency department. And can I tell you this? A lot of people worry about, um, well, will I end up at emergency up here, Jenny Lee? If you can call a counselor or reach out or kids helpline and create a safety plan that keeps yourself safe, no, that's not where you'll be. We're learning that people can keep themselves safe in community if they talk about their suicide thoughts and, um, and if they, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing because I want you to see this, um, that it's really important that we know people can keep themselves safe in community if they talk about their suicide thoughts. Um, they have someone that can listen to them non-judgmentally, and they have a professional adult that can help them create a safety plan so that when things get bad, they have a plan about what do I need to do for myself, and if this isn't working, who do I call? And so I share that with you because, like I said, I use it in my practice when I'm talking to people about their suicide ideation. And even if people have never had a suicide um, thought that's got so bad that they have a plan or have thought about how they how, how they might suicide. I still like to do that plan with people because it's so important that we prepare for the worst and hope that it never gets there. And so I just want to recap a little bit the important things that we we chatted about today because then I want to open it up to the chat room if there's any questions or maybe even not necessarily questions you have, but questions that you think people might have who are later watching this video. So we can try and give people as much information as we can in our time together. So it's really important. Today is International Suicide Prevention Day. So what a day to be talking about this. It's really important that we pay attention and, and if we notice things that worry us about people, Maybe they're giving away their things or they're saying goodbye to family and friends. Maybe they're doing more risky behavior or they're not interested in the things that they used to love doing. Um, maybe they're not responding to calls or when you see them, they just don't look like themselves. You're gonna start noticing the signs that someone might be thinking about suicide. And even though those might, none of them might not have to do about suicide, we're still gonna wanna ask. Hey, Jenny Lee, I noticed that you don't seem like yourself lately and you're missing out on activities and you're not returning my phone calls and I'm starting to feel worried about you. Jenny Lee, are you thinking about suicide? And so again, important to use the words thinking about suicide or thinking about killing yourself. So they know what we're talking about. And then it's important if they say yes, well, let's say if they say no, well, the conversation, it can go a little something like this. I'm relieved it's not about suicide, but I can see you're still not feeling like yourself. Can we talk about it? But if they do say yes, then you want to listen. You want to let them know that there's no shame in um, experiencing thoughts of suicide, that there's no need to feel embarrassed, and that talking about it is what's going to help save their lives and help them combat these thoughts around suicide. If they talk about uh, how they might suicide or how they're thinking about killing themselves, you're going to want to make sure that when you tell a trusted adult about what's going on, that you let them know those details as well so that together you can all create a safe space for the person thinking about suicide. And so when you're listening, one of the things I like to say to people is you can say, this is really important that we tell somebody else who can help us. And I forgot to mention that that might be a counselor, it might be a parent, but we can't also forget that 
It might be someone at church. Um, it might be, um, uh, who else might it be? Oh my gosh, the, the list is endless. It might be a teacher at school or a guidance counselor. It might be a youth group leader. It might be someone just to say, this is what's going on and we need some more help to get us connected to the resources. Oh, it might even be your doctor. And so, but you're going to want to make sure that if someone lets you know they're thinking about suicide, that you do tr tell a trusted adult. So together, you can figure out who's the best resource to connect this person to in order to, like we showed on that scale, interrupt the thoughts of suicide and help pause them at a three or pause them at a five or pause them at a seven so that they don't get worse. And it's really important for you to let someone know, though, that if it does get worse, eight, nine, and ten, that that's super scary and it's still nothing to feel ashamed or embarrassed about but that's definitely a time to call our crisis number go to the emergency room or call 911 and just say i've had a safety plan or i'd like to make a safety plan because right now i can't keep myself safe and my thoughts are really big and strong and scary and intimidating so that kind of is it in a nutshell I'm not sure if people in the chat will have some questions themselves or have ideas of questions that people might be asking when they're watching the video later. Does anyone have any thoughts or feedback that are here? Oh, I love that it's been added to the chat. Um, another thing that you might do, uh, I, I said about getting lost in um, YouTube land or you might need a movie day, but watch a funny show. Isn't that true? Isn't it great when you're not feeling good to watch something fun, right? And try and I say to people, change your brain to change your pain. And so how do we do that sometimes? Sometimes when you're feeling down, it's great to watch a funny show. And the example we got here, I don't know this show, but someone maybe check it out and let me know. Alexa and Katie. Rumor has it that's a funny one. So that's a great idea too. Finding a funny show. And even better, if you can find a funny show to watch with somebody. I think it's really important that we know that no matter if you have your own suicide thoughts or you're talking to somebody about their suicide thoughts, um, that we tell people like, you're not alone and it's okay to talk about this. And um, it's important that we talk about this. Oh, great question in the chat room. So what if a person is resistant to getting the help? And so I think this is where it's really important that you say to someone, you know, like who says, it's not that bad or I don't need anybody else. I'll say to people, well, it's really important um, that we tell somebody else. I hear that it's not bad or that you don't want to get anybody else involved, but I know what's really important to helping you stay safe from those suicide thoughts is letting other people know what's happening. And you know what, like maybe that person's resistant to go to a counselor because it's not that bad. Okay, that's okay. And then you say, that's okay, but can we make a plan that, you know, uh, now that we've told um, your, your youth group leader, um, can we make a promise that if things get worse that you'll tell me and we can at least tell the youth group leader. You don't need to go to the counselor, you don't need to go to a doctor, but can you commit to at least letting me and our trusted adult know if thoughts get worse. And typically, I'll tell you, typically, people will be less resistant when you let them know. It's just part of the safety plan to talk about it. And because we want to know um, that we want you to know that we're a safe place to talk to, we're safe people, and we want to know if it gets worse because then we can talk about how do we help you now where you're at. Because it is super hard to tell somebody, first of all, that you're thinking about suicide. And then in that conversation to be told, we need to tell one more person, that can feel really intimidating. But when you can frame it to a person to say, well, we're just creating your safety group, right? Because you're not in it alone. And, um, oh, I think I missed a comment. Oh. One thing I've heard people struggle with before is being nervous about losing a relationship or someone not talking to them anymore if they tell someone. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really hard one. And I think one of the important things um, to remember is you can tell people that you're worried about that or someone might say that, you know, if you tell someone we can't be friends anymore. And I think in that moment, you just need to remember that what's most important is keeping that person safe. 
And so it sounds a bit drastic, but I've said to people, I would rather you be angry at me than to be dead. And in order to ensure that that's the case, we've got to tell somebody else in order to help you stay safe. And I know that's really, really, really hard to do. Um, and my hope always is, is that if people are angry at first, um, afterwards, you know, give them some time, they'll realize that you were doing it because you care about them, because you were worried and maybe you love them, right? And, that, and that's important. To, and you know that telling someone isn't about, um, breaking secrets or being a mean friend or a mean partner, but it really is about knowing that we know safety means involving someone else. Yeah, and I see in the comments that it has happened to people before here that I do worry about it and maybe I have lost friends or I was in a relationship um, that I lost because of this. And again, I know it sounds really harsh to say and hear, but I would much rather um, someone be angry at me than, um, than to keep a secret that they're thinking about suicide and then they die. And so really, really tough. I think that's one of the hardest things about this conversation with people is what if they get mad? And, um, and it's just to remind them, I don't want you to be angry, but I care about you. And this is, this is what I've learned will best um, help keep you safe. Mm -hmm. And I see a really awesome comment in here uh, in the chat. Talking uh, keeps people safe and remembering our first priority as a friend family member and support is keeping people safe. Yeah, super, super important. Thanks for that chat room. Mm -hmm. And I see people talking about, yeah, they've lost friends and they don't want anything to do with them. And, and you know what? Um, I'll tell you, even as a therapist, I've had people get really angry and storm out of a room. And, um, and I, I always make sure that I let somebody else know what's going on so that I'm not doing it alone, but that person also isn't alone, even though they've left my office. And so even as a social worker in a therapist role doing this work, I've definitely experienced people getting upset and storming out of rooms. And, you're, and just like we hear in the chat room, um, some people don't want to chat anymore and others have said, I was really angry, but I know it's because you care about me, Jenny Lee, and it was important. You were doing what you knew was important in order to help me stay safe. Mm -hmm. Any other questions in the chat room or comments or thoughts or anything you were hoping that we would touch on that we haven't in our time together? Well, I'll keep an eye on the chat as I wrap up then. I just want to thank uh, Wilkins Hub and Jenna uh, again for having me. And oh, ways to ease anxiety. And do you mean anxiety in yourself or anxiety about talking about suicide? Uh, yes, in general, not just about suicide. Oh my goodness, I feel like we could spend another 45 uh, minutes talking about that and, and um, maybe uh, the hub crew can keep a, take a note of that, that we've had a, um, uh, a question in the chat about ways to ease anxiety and myself in general. And I think um, that could be a really uh, great conversation and really great brainstorm, especially when we think about that rating system, that chart I showed you, the safety plan. What are things that I can do um, when, when I start to feel these big emotions, right? And um, so I think that would be a great theme. We gave you a few tonight. Um, you know, I, they kind of are like the standard go-to ones I think we use a lot because they're easily accessible, like journaling and going for a walk or, you know, lost in YouTube land or finding a fun video. Other ways to ease anxiety. I say to people, if you can take three big breaths into your belly and not into your chest, that helps your brain connect to your mind and helps ease uh, your body that's in anxiety. Um, another great thing that lots of people don't know is the color blue and green. The colors blue and green are really calming colors. And so if you're feeling very, really anxious, maybe you, um, if you're at a computer, maybe you pull up um, some images uh, that are blue and green and just spend some time exploring them. 
maybe you create your own image out of blue or green. And I think we forget to tell people this is why going for walks sometime are extra good because then we're surrounded in the blue sky and the green around us. And when we notice those things, they can actually help ease our anxiety too. And so those are just a few things, but I see in the chat that Jenna has said they're open to ideas and I've noted that a good theme might be how to ease anxiety in yourself. And so hopefully I've been able to give you a few ideas here in the end. Um, but want to thank you again for having me uh, at the hub, um, guys. And uh, again, I sit at the co-chair of the suicide prevention team. And so if you've got any follow-up questions about, um, about our chat today or questions come up afterwards, please um, let Jenna uh, and the hub crew know. Uh, and you can find me. They've got all my contact information. And maybe I can send it here in the chat for people. And that can be shared so that if people have follow-up questions or maybe you're talking to a friend or a parent about our conversation today and people want some follow-up I'm happy uh, to chat again about it so thanks guys and um, maybe I'll see you again sometime